Good afternoon everyone, how are you doing? This is Amanda, I do hope that you're well. Today is the 9th of December and I thought what we would do in this video is have a look at the energy around Harry and Meghan um, following the release of their Netflix documentary. As I record this, the second half of it hasn't yet aired, which I believe is next week, but intuitively I have pretty good feel for what I suspect might be coming out and we're going to look at the fallout, um, how damaging this is to the mon monarchy in the short and long term, um, have a look at the energy of King Charles, Prince William, Catherine, obviously Harry and Meghan themselves. I'm going to be referencing back to past work that I've done um, because I've read on uh, these two uh, a number of times and also picked up on past life energies, um, which I see a lot of people are agreeing with now. I'm seeing a lot of videos talking about the past lives of these two, but I think I was the first that highlighted it, um, Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. So, uh, and also the past life energy of William and Kate. Um, and, you know, when you understand the roots of it, you can have a better understanding of what's actually going on. So we're gonna have a look at that. My own intuitive feelings, um, I did say this morning on Facebook and Instagram that the comments might be turned off on this video at some point, either at the start, midway through, or not at all. We'll see how it goes. But what I really don't want it to turn into is a complete bun fight with people fighting. <laughs> and I don't want to be piggy in the middle, caught in the middle of it all. So uh, for my peace of mind, the comments might be switched off because I know people have very strong opinions either way um, on this and on the monarchy in general. So if it's a subject that's really going to trigger you, um, come back next time, OK? And we'll be doing um, other subjects which might be more to your liking, okay? But I am being asked to read on this, so I'm going to, and I feel I've got something that's worth saying as well. All right. Um, so with the utmost respect and love for all people concerned, um, we will dive into it. Um, now, I'm going to pick out some of the uh, things that are being talked about after the airing of the, excuse me, the first half of it. <coughs> um, but before we do that, let's just, I wonder what the date was that it launched. It was launched on the 8th, wasn't it? Today's the 9th. Let me just look at the numerology of when it first aired. So the 8th to the 12th, 2022, adds up to a 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, it's an eight energy, so it's it's a power grab is what I'm hearing. Let me just let me just double check that. It's on the eight that was aired, and I think it all adds up to an eight as well. So it's a double eight. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yes, I'm right. It's a double eight. It's an eight, eight, eight energy. Um, that fits, to be honest. It especially fits when you think of Henry the Eighth <laughs> and all of that power and sovereignty that he had in that lifetime. But just because you've been something in a previous life, of course, doesn't mean that you repeat exactly the same behaviours. But I think sometimes when you have a particular circumstance or you're born back into a particular family, in this case, the royal family, there can be trigger points and flash points that make you um, sort of return to similar behaviour that you might have displayed before. Or you could completely change track and be very, very different. But I'm feeling here he's reverting a little bit to his Henry VIII energy. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll get into that in a moment. What did I want to start by saying? Um, OK, the first thing I'm saying, going to say is that this is a piece of imagery that I received from Spirit. And by Spirit, I'm talking about Archangel Metatron, my main guide. So take away all of the dramas around this uh, and all of the characters involved what I'm seeing is a huge, great big wrecking ball. You know, like Miley Cyrus, when she's on the wrecking ball and she's swinging back and forward. Well, that's what I'm seeing, okay? So a wrecking ball has been let loose and the wrecking ball is the energy of Harry and Meghan that wish to, uh, they would say, transform. Others would say, try and tarnish or destroy, okay? Let's try and stay you know, fair to both sides here. 
Um, but they obviously wish to have impact. So I'm seeing this wrecking ball energy going towards the royal family. But also remember, this is actually Harry's family. It's not an abstract thing that just sort of floats in the ethers. It's a real family made up of brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandmothers, etc. Rest in peace to the Queen. Um, it's his family. So the wrecking ball is going towards the royal family. But what I'm being shown very clearly is the wrecking ball, unfortunately, then comes back and it hits them squarely in the face. OK, so it's as though whatever they have unleashed comes back to them. OK, so um, that's concerning for them as a couple in term. And I don't actually think that they both fully appreciate the energy that they have just sent out. And there's going to be a counter move. Um, there's certainly going to be a counter move by King Charles. I did pull some cards on this last night. And I wish I'd had my camera on because they were so telling. But I'm going to pull them afresh. But last night it was clearly showing that he will cut them loose. Uh, whether that means removing their titles, um, banning them from future state events. Remember, there's going to be a coronation of King Charles next May. And I don't quite see how these two can just sort of ruck up to it, having let loose what they've let loose. And, you know, again, take away the uh, the personalities. Imagine if it was your family and you have written a book, maybe, or say you've gone on to national TV in front of millions of people and you have aired every single piece of dirty laundry that you possibly can find in terms of this even like down to showing text messages and all the rest of it, um, there will, by nature of the beast, be repercussions for that in any family. You either have a closing down of the doors and a shutting of the doors, or you have an olive branch, an olive branch that stays open, but there, there will be, and always will be, some sort of counter reaction. But anyway, we'll pull cards on Charles again. But yeah, the first thing I see is the wrecking ball. Um, a few other things that are coming to me um, from what I've seen. This is quite a strong message um, and it's something I've been picking up for quite a few months, to be honest. I'm obviously online. I'm a public figure, so I have my finger sort of on the pulse or I try to. Certainly, I get lots of messages in and there's definitely been an undercurrent of... Um, I want to use the word hate, but that sounds like such a horrible word. and It's such a strong word, but it's the only word I can really use that is what it feels like. As a British national myself, it feels as though there is a wave of hate coming towards the UK, coming towards Britain for past deeds. Now, this obviously is linked into colonialism, uh, slavery, but and I've said this on other videos before. Whilst all of that needs to be um, acknowledged and is acknowledged um, and, and maybe discussed, no one's trying to sweep anything under the rug. We are in an era now where um, all of our histories, if you think about yourself, all of your personal stories, all of your histories are coming up for examination, for reflection, healing, acknowledgement, etc., both the light and the shadow. And so too it is with every single country in our world. And every single country, without exception, has collective karma, has things in its past that maybe present day generations, the vast majority, are not particularly proud of. But I'm also hearing Metatron say the sins of the father, because it's this thing about how many generations forward do the sins of the father still have to be a stain um, upon a fresh new baby, for example, that's born today as a British national or me sitting here in my 50s who had no part in the slave trade, who's had no part in a colonial uh, industry or any of that. But I happen to be born in this country in this particular lifetime. But I also know I've had many lifetimes in many other countries as well. Um, so from a higher perspective, it actually gets quite 
um, it's very clear that what we're doing is we're trying to blame the present generation for what our forefathers did. If you look at another country such as Nazi Germany, do we look at young Germans today or Germans generally as all Nazis because of what happened in the 1940s? I would very much hope not. But I've definitely felt this anti-British uh, backlash coming for a little while, almost as though there's an energy of we need to go and hide under a, you know, a duvet somewhere and not show our head in public <laughs> for a few years. Well, I'm afraid we're not going anywhere. And actually, the one thing I do know about this country, having lived in it all my life, is that it's a multicultural country uh, made up of people of all different colours, all different faiths many different ancestries and actually that's something that I'm really proud of and I, I don't know anybody else in my life or my friendship group my peer group that wouldn't also say that that's that's the absolute truth so whilst we know that racism for example which is one of the um uh, accusations that's coming from Harry and Meghan linked into the royal family being part of it they also tie in, I believe, the Brexit vote, which I think was about 52% of the British population, as being a reflection of some sort of racist undercurrent. Um, I think we've got to be very careful when we bandy words like that around. Um, because racism absolutely exists within Britain, as it does within probably every nation upon earth. So it's almost as though, but if the spotlight has to be put here for, for whatever reason, if we are, as I believe, the Earth star chakra of the planet, maybe we're meant to uh, start some sort of chain reaction whereby it's looked at here first, but then is looked at in other countries too. Because to point a finger of blame just at one country and one people, I think is really unfair. So... Uh, I think there is some projection going on big time in this story that's playing out. I think definitely we need to remember that present day generation of all countries is not the same generation of 300, 400, 500, whatever years ago. Um, and and that, that is important. That's a very important part of it. So what else do I want to say? Um, so I've written down some notes here. Yeah, I've also seen... Um, one of the things that I believe Harry and Meghan were talking about, I don't know what the exact words were, but they were alluding to the Commonwealth, which, of course, is one of the Queen's things that she took the most pride in. Again, you can't really judge something like the Commonwealth being either good, bad, indifferent, based on what we need now as a structure in our world versus what might have been required, needed, wanted. Um decades ago um, but I've definitely read comments over the last 24 hours of people in the Commonwealth who are very offended by the implication that somehow they are these uh, I think they call it something like the Empire Part 2 subservient servants of the crown there's no energy of that in the UK that we feel like this towards our, com our Commonwealth brothers or sisters none at all um, so these are dangerous words that are being banded around. And remember what I've said as well, words are spells. So there is no second empire here. There is no empire building. There is just what we should be seeking is reconciliation, communication, listening to each other and starting a dialogue in terms of how does the rest of the 21st century look? Um, Intuitively, my sense is that when particularly William becomes king, because he will become king, this fracas now, this drama around this Netflix documentary is not going to put William off track in terms of becoming king. That is, I can absolutely guarantee you. So um, what I'm seeing is when William becomes king, there will be a natural organic splintering off of different Commonwealth countries. Australia may very well be first, possibly Canada following quite quickly, but it will be up to the people to decide that. But what it's not going to be is some sort of control energy in terms of trying to keep any country where they don't wish to be anymore or don't wish to be part of something anymore. 
Um, and I think William has a great understanding of that, that it will organically change. So, but back to why we're doing this video today, we've got this wrecking ball and we're going to have a look at the impact um, on it. It should also be noted, and I'm observing this just in the collective energy, that there are vastly different opinions about, for example, the Harry and Meghan dynamic duo energy based on where you live in the world. OK, um, when they got married here in the UK, my my understanding and from what I saw of people on the streets, on the TV, were people were were happy for them. They were welcomed. They were a breath of fresh air. There was no, um, there's always going to be an undercurrent of people saying stupid things. That, that's true of anything in life. But the vast majority of people welcomed this. Um, now, I think, I'm going to pull cards on it, but I just feel as though there's a closing down and a protection of the monarchy of those that love it. Um, another really important point I wanted to make here is that there's a bit in the documentary where, I took a photograph of it actually, um, Megan does this fake, well she sort of does this fake curtsy, she's talking about how she met the Queen at the Commonwealth Games or something like that, I can't remember, and she does this very grand sort of gesture, basically taking the mickey out of it. And if you actually look at Harry's face while she's doing this, he's actually got a face like thunder, literally like thunder. Because whatever's going on between the two of them, he's obviously invested in this documentary. He's going to play the role that he needs to play in it. He needs to tell his story. He feels he needs to tell his story. But at that moment, the mocking of the tradition um, really spoke to me. And I want you just to think about this. We live in a world where we're all walking on eggshells a lot of the time often for very good reasons, because there are sensitivities at play uh, with regards to cultural traditions, uh, different countries' heritage, different people's heritage. I would just like to ask you how you think it would go down if a couple, whoever they are, not necessarily Harry and Meghan, anybody, anybody on the world stage in front of millions mocked the traditions and the heritage, for example, of indigenous people, okay? Or, uh, well, that's a good example, actually, of indigenous people somewhere. There was a mocking and a laughing because that's how it's landing here. You might not understand the British traditions. You might think they're outdated, quaint, stupid. But from a place of fifth dimensional consciousness and unity consciousness, we have to respect that where history and where, where, where people are still at. And so the curtsy might seem as though it's, it just doesn't mean anything, it's not needed anymore. But there was, some, there was an undercurrent when she did that, which was more about mocking the whole, all of it, the bells and whistles, we might call it. And again, it's quite interesting because as I sit here, what I'm intuitively feeling is that Charles is going to start this off, but William will finish it, is that a lot of the bells and whistles are going to be done away with anyway. There's going to be an, orga an organic flushing through to make the royal family more streamlined. The coronation of King Charles has already been uh, very much slimmed down. It's not going to have all the trappings of the Queen's coronation, and I suspect William will be exactly the same as well, a much more slimmed down celebration and service without so much of the pomp and ceremony, a little bit of it, because we're British, we like that, but not so much. But it comes in naturally. It does. It shouldn't come in via a wrecking ball energy, which is about mocking and deriding. Um, so I think that's worth just feeling into as well. Um, anything else to say before I start pulling some cards? Um, said that uh, I've said that okay um, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit to oh before I do that actually 
Another thing I'd like to mention, just because if you're not in the UK, you don't necessarily understand what's going on here at the moment, as I don't understand what's maybe going on in South Africa or other countries, because I'm not there. But certainly in the UK at the moment, we're hitting a really difficult moment in the winter. There is a very real uh, cost of living crisis, a very real fuel crisis. People, many people not being able to properly afford to heat their homes, eat proper food. Um, it's, a, it's a real crisis. And there is also what amounts to pretty much a, a general strike at the moment going on all the way through December. It's been going on in no, for, for November as well. It's going into January. A lot of the major infrastructure, as I said in my last video, is just shutting down. So these are hard times anyway, where people are trying to pull together, get through it. Um, and it doesn't sit very well with the British public, the timing of this release, in addition to only being three months after the Queen died herself, who again, many people might mock and say it's an outdated thing and you don't need a Queen, you don't need a King. But you have to respect that there's a silent majority, basically. There is a silent majority, which is what you saw during the Queen's funeral and the days after her death. The silent majority that turn up because they do actually still love their monarch. They love the traditions. They love the royal family. Now, again, this may very well change in the future. The, the UK might become some sort of republic and we'll have President Rishi Sunak in the future. Um, I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime. Personally, I might be very wrong. Um, but at the moment, the groundswell is still behind the royal family. And I am sh pretty sure about that. If you took a poll tomorrow, the vast majority would still be for it. So, um, yeah, just respect our traditions, really, I think is the most important thing to say. Um, backtracking then. So some of the videos that I've done in the past... When I, I can't remember when this was, it was a couple of years ago, it was a ch ch channeling with Princess Diana, actually, I think. Um, but Diana gave me a song uh, linked into Harry and Meghan. And uh, it's a very beautiful song. In fact, I owe Diana for getting me onto this guy because he's brilliant. Um, it's called The Power Over M The Power Over Me by Dermot Kennedy. Um, this, Diana gave me this song and I talked about it in that particular vid video. And I think it says it said so much then and I think it says so much now because I do believe Meghan is the one who wears the trousers in the relationship. Um, but Harry has to take complete responsibility for where he is now as well and what he is doing and his actions. So in no way am I just blaming Meghan for this. I know other people think that Meghan's doing a great job and a great service and, you know, they champion her. Um, but this is the song that Diana gave me. It says, I want to be king in your story. I want to know who you are. I want your heart to be for me. I want you to sing to me softly because then I might run in the dark. That's all our love ever taught me. Um... You've got the power over me, the only one I know, the only one on my mind. You've got that power over me. Um, on, remember the lake in the moonlight. Remember you shivered and shone. I'll never forget what you looked like on that night. But I know that time's going to take me. I know that day's going to come. I just want the devil to hate me. Call and I'll rush out. You've got the power over me. It's... Quite an interesting lyrics, actually, as it goes on. But it's basically about somebody having the power um, over another. Uh, although I think really now there's more of a codependency with those two. But, yeah, we had that song. Then we had the uh, past lives coming in. Henry VIII, Harry, Anne Boleyn, um, Meghan. Of course, Henry VIII, when he was king, chopped off or ordered somebody to chop off Anne Boleyn's head. Um, I was actually watching a programme on it the other day, a history programme. This is a bit of a macabre detail, but this, they, the story goes that when Anne Boleyn's head was cut off, you know, they had this horrible thing. They, they used to put your head up and show the crowd and the crowd would roar with, a, with approval. The legend goes that her lips kept moving. She kept speaking. So um, 
rather rather macabre, I know, but that's that's the legend. Um, <coughs> and Henry VIII was a wrecking ball. You know, this is the thing. Was, the wrecking ball energy. Henry VIII was a wrecking ball. He did what he wanted to do. He completely and utterly transformed um, the kingdom as it was then. We became a Anglican uh, country. Church of England was formed. We turned our back on Rome and the Catholic Church. I, I think we failed to understand how huge that was going back those centuries. Um, and of course, I also picked up that Catherine was uh, Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII's first wife, um, who he divorced, of course, but who I think she outlived him. But certainly she was always loyal, always steadfast, like a rock, basically. And Kate now is still the rock. Um, William, just whilst we're on past lives, then we're going to do some cards. What's interesting about William, I didn't really explore this very much at the time, but I picked up that I felt William was George V. And today I just went back over that and I, I came across a couple of really interesting things that George V was supposed to have said. Um, he seems to have been very much for the people, very much in tune with the people. And there's something about, um, the, I'm just going to read these two quotes to you. So this is King George V all those years ago. Is it possible that my people live in such awful conditions? I tell you, Mr Wheatley, that if I had to live in conditions like that, I would be a revolutionary myself. And then I have many times asked whether there can be more potent advocates of peace upon earth through the years to come than this massed multitude of silent witnesses to the desolation of war. He seems to be quite a political figure in some ways, uh, George V. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Right, let's get to the cards. Um, I felt like I needed to say that before we began, give a bit of background. Um, let's pick the cards up and start shuffling. Um, my gripe with these two is, and I'm just going to be clear on it, that, as I said at the beginning, I believe that racism needs to be called out. Um, of that, there is, you know, no doubt in my mind, whether it's within the royal family, whether it's within Joe Bloggs' family down the, down the road. Um, whether there is racism in the royal family... I don't know. But, uh, remember, there's two sides to every story. Oh, and again, we're talking about present day generation. Probably in a lot of people's families, actually, there, there are little pockets of racism. Let's be honest about it. You know, certainly if you go up to um, older generations, it can still very much be there. Um, but it's just... What I'm really feeling is that is the people that feel that these two are champions for outing racism. I'm feeling as though you've got a dud hero and heroine because I, I think they're doing it for their own ends. I just do. I think there's narcissism at play um, in both. And I think it's a story that works well for them to achieve what they wish to achieve. And I think their main driver is publicity, money and fame. And remember, these two left the UK for a private life. They wanted their privacy. But yet here they are on Netflix, um, pretty much selling their soul, showing their most private moments, um, opening up their family vaults. Um, there is no, you can't have it both ways. I think Princess Diana sort of found this as well. I don't think she learned the lesson in her lifetime, but um, that you can't have it both ways. Diana very much courted the, um, the press, but was also um, bound to the press. Page of Swords, by the way, just leapt out. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and then the other thing, you know, escaping, wanting a private life, but they've been bailed out by an awful lot of money from the UK. They've taken a lot of money. 
They've still got the diamonds, they've still got the titles, they're living a life of luxury beyond what most people can imagine. Um, it's just, what is the main motivation? Is it genuinely to call out, for example, race? Or is it revenge? And I feel it's more revenge. And that's why the wrecking ball, I feel, comes back to them. Because I firmly believe that you can't create happiness on other people's unhappiness. Not long term. There has to be an energy of forgiveness that comes in. Um, at some point. Right, so we've got Page of Swords that just flipped out. I'm not quite sure who that is. That might just be representative of truth. Um, so I'm going to put that one back into the pack so it can come out again. And let's start asking some questions, shall we? So where shall I start? Let's just pull some cards on the documentary itself. OK, so I'd like to see the energy, please, of the documentary itself. So Harry and Meghan, Netflix documentary, four cards I'm hearing. Can I see the energy um, of this um, documentary? So the one that's flipped out is the world. So whether they know it or not, and maybe they do, maybe they've intended this, this completes a cycle for them. Some would say it for Harry, it's cathartic. He's getting his side of the story out. She's getting her side of the story out. But the thing with the world card, and it's, it's playing out on the world stage, of course, in a very dramatic way. The thing with the world card is it is also an ending. OK, so it's a fur. It's like I'm being shown a book and it's firmly being closed. Uh, it feels as though there's no way back from this. OK, once everything's out in the open, um, it's going to be hard for them to come back into the family is what I'm feeling at the outset. But let's just see what else. So this is playing out on the world stage. What else is there to say about this, please? We've got the Queen of Pentacles. Money. Why have we got the Queen of Pentacles? Is it Megan seeing herself as the queen? Maybe. We have the Ace of Wands. We have ten of uh, pentacles on the bottom of the deck. I'd said four cards, didn't I? So I'm going to just stay with what I've, I'm saying in this video. Otherwise it's going to go on forever. Um, so the energy of this documentary is about money. Um... I feel as though they, Harry and Meghan, feel as though it's a great creative outlet. Wands is linked into creativity. Um, I'm also wanting to say, putting the Ace of Wands with the Ten of Pentacles, it's a fast, quick way to make money. They're being paid a lot for this documentary, a lot. Um, and I can't help but see that the only uh, grown-up in this spread... Because this one here in the world feels more like an angelic type frequency in the centre of the circle is the female. So this feels as though it's driven more from Meghan's side than Harry's side, which is odd, really, because it's more his story. I mean, it, OK, they've presented it. It's, it's their love story. It's how they met. But let's be perfectly honest. If she hadn't married Harry, there wouldn't be this Netflix documentary happening. So ultimately, it's about their relationship, yes, but it's on the back of his story and it's on the back of his um, ability to make money, which is because he's a ex-royal. OK, um, let's see. I'm going to ask, how is it short term going to be received and how is it long term going to be received? OK, so this is just by the public. Um, we've got the nine of cups that's just flown out of the deck because I was talking about that. And I'm going to just read the, the uh, imagery on the card rather than the official meaning of nine of cups. It's as though people are feasting on the story. <laughs> Can you see that? It's like people are picking over the bones 
they're really quite gluttonous. It's like, give me another dose of gossip. You know, give me the latest instalment of what the Queen said and what Charles said. And oh my God, did they do this and did they do that? And oh, poor you. And it's like, oh my God, I can't wait for the next instalment. It's that type of energy. It's a very lower energy. It's very graspy. It's very gossipy. Uh, this is public energy. OK, um, so that's what I'm feeling. That's what I'm truly feeling. And it's like, Harry, it's like, well, I'm going to serve you up another episode of it because you liked it so much last time. Um, or not as the case, maybe. <laughs> so that, that I'm just going to put that there. All right. That's short term then. So short term, that's how it's being viewed. Uh, let's have one more actually to go with that. Short term, how is it being viewed um, as a love story, as a love story? overall as a love story okay these two against the world these two against the world short term is how it's being viewed remember we've only had the first lot of episodes as i'm recording this okay long term how is it going to be viewed interesting card to come out yeah the five of swords long term these two come out, the Hermit as well. Um, this is victory at any cost. There's going to be a high price to pay for this having been made long term. And at the moment, the hot headed, red headed one is wielding the sword and feeling very victorious. I've won at all costs. I've won. But it's followed by a very, very... Uh, I'm actually feeling loneliness in this card, the Hermit card. I know the Hermit card is about all sorts of other things, but I'm feeling a loneliness, having to really go within. It's like I've got my dog. I haven't got much else around me. Um, loneliness follows. Um, also, the Hermit there with the Five of Swords is an energy of reflection in terms of all of this very rash, hasty, fast moving. Let's do it. Let's get the money in. Let's tell our story. Let's present it as this love story of the century, you know. But actually, there's. I'm going to pull some cards for what is in the middle. Because long term, it's not looking so good. Um, and actually, I'm drawn to the fact that the hermit is old in this picture. So it doesn't necessarily mean that this is next year or in six months time. I'm feeling Harry's energy here more than anything. Um, but as an older man, looking back, reflecting. Um, and he's on an icy slope there on his own out in the wilderness. OK. Um, Let's pull some cards now in terms of how Harry is feeling now it's been released. And then we'll do Megan. Let me just have some drink. I feel there's something in what I just said. Let me have some drink. I've actually just got a couple of lemon tea. I'm wondering whether he reaches for a drink. I think he likes a drink. OK, um, so release of the Netflix documentary, Harry and Meghan. How is Meg? No, how? See, Meghan's wanting to come through first. OK, we'll do her first. How is Meghan feeling? How is Meghan feeling now that this documentary has been aired? Knight of Cups and the Knight of Pentacles. Two men around her. We've also got the Seven of uh, Swords, which is manipulation, lies, betrayal. Um, why have we got the two knights? Megan, why have we got the two knights? How is she feeling? Why have we got the two knights? Okay, I'm going to put the cards down. Right, what I'm intuitively feeling is she is going to have to deal with Harry's moods. 
These are both actually Harry. Harry on a good day, Harry on a bad day. Harry can be very, very emotional, very, very up, for good, for bad. Um, he can also have days where he's more grounded and secure and knows where he's going. This is a prince who is very, very up and down. Um, there are days where she doesn't quite know how to handle him. Um, I also feel as though he's in more than one place. Um, I know the speculation out there that they live separate lives, for example, even though they're still married. I don't I haven't pulled cards on that. But what I'm feeling here is that. I'm always wanting to say the energy of now you see him, now you don't. That's what I'm picking up here. Now you see him, now you don't. And we've got this seven of swords energy. Can't quite get a handle on it. Where is she in all this? Let me see her energy, please. This is more about Harry. Can I see Megan's energy, please, at this time? Can I see Megan's energy, please, at this time? Now the dust has settled. We have the moon and we have the five of cups. It's, you know, it's interesting. Whatever they intended, it feels as though both in different ways, it's not quite what they expected it to be. Forget the public face, you know, the, the glitz, the glamour, um, all of that, the lovely dovey stuff when the cameras are rolling. Uh, when the cameras are not rolling, there is some sadness here. There is some... Um, Spilt milk is what I'm wanting to say. <laughs> it's actually like spilt blood and spilt water on this card. The five of cups. The three cups which are forever gone. Okay, burnt bridges there. There's two cups that are still standing. So, um, but she can't quite see that yet. I don't think it's going to bring her what she thinks it's going to bring her. And the moon is just... Let me have clarification on the moon card. Confusion. Um, the chariot and the three of um, swords. Moving towards heartache quite quickly. I, I just don't think it plays very well for her, this. I don't, and, but you're not necessarily gonna see that. Okay, let's now have a look at Harry, Harry's energy. Please show me the energy of Harry at this time. Please show me the energy of Harry at this time. Uh, his energy, before I even pull the card, I'm just seeing a little boy sucking his thumb in a corner. Uh, aged about, well, not very good with ages. I'd say aged about six. Um... Okay, someone's taken his toys away. This might be Charles is going to take his toys away, but the toys that Charles is going to take away are big toys, okay? They're toys that matter. They're titles. It might be linked into money as well. Um, invitation around the family table, that type of thing. Uh, I'm seeing a little boy uh, on his own in the corner. Let's see what the cards say, though. Harry, how's Harry doing at this time? We have the, um, what is that? The Seven of Wands and the Queen of Wands. So there's bickering with Megan. We've also got the Justice card. We've also got the Eight of, um, what is that? The Eight of Cups. So I'll just show you those so you can see them. Harry's Energy. We have the Seven of, seven of Wands, Defensiveness, um, Trying to be Top Dog. This one trying to be above the others. It's not really teamwork. Um, Queen of Wands here, I think, is Megan. Sitting pretty. But we've got the Justice card. I mean, that can be, in, in a normal reading, can sometimes um, imply divorce. Doesn't have to be. It could also just be that they get themselves up to their neck in judicial problems. I think there are things within this documentary they've told untruths and it's going to be proven that they've that they have said untruths and maybe there's going to be some legal action taken. I mean I can't believe the royal family would take legal action against them, but they might have done it 
I don't know, they might, I'm just feeling there might be somebody or something that's referenced that doesn't like what's being said and does and, and takes legal action against them. Or this could just be other things that are going on in the background. It could be wranglings and dealings with Netflix itself. Um, but it results in this energy of um, Eight of Cups walking away from something, walking away from something. This all also could be, I've done the documentary now, I'm just walking away from it. Um, I got my money and I'm off. I don't know. Um, show me the state of their relationship at this time, please. Harry, and then we're going to look at how other people are feeling about them. Uh, show me the state of their relationship at this time, please. Harry and Meghan, show me the state of their relationship at this time. The magician. They feel as though they've got all the tools on the table. Um, all the balls are in their court. They're still in that Knight of Wands energy, you see. It's still very passionate. Um, I don't mean sexually. I just mean there's a very passionate energy here in terms of moving forward, things to do, people to see, being the centre of attention, being on the front of the newspapers, um, enjoying the acclaim, enjoying the attention, um, interviews to do, people to see, uh, that type of thing. Their marriage at this time, it's interesting those two cards have come out. We've got the Ace of Pentacles and the Ace of Cups. Um, you might read them differently to me, but I'm viewing these, that this is a relationship that's founded on money. Um, I'm just going to say as it is in this video, I feel as though if Harry was like Harry Jones, who was a book maker, a, a, a book, a book, what was I trying to say, a boot maker, in, I don't know, Canva Kansas, I don't think she'd have looked at him twice. I, I don't. I think the attraction was he had the money, he had the prestige, he had the family. I think that's the fame, that's what interested her. The love is conditional upon the money. And as long as the money keeps running in, um, it's going to work. But if the money starts to be more difficult, then it might all get a bit more difficult. Right. Let's now have a look at the other players in this and see if we can look at this from a different angle. Okay. I'm going to do a different deck, I think. Yeah. Let's just shuffle this one up so I can use it again for something else. Let's have a look at how Charles is feeling at this time. As you know, I'm going to use the same deck, you know. Let me just shuffle it properly. because it's working well. Why, why change it when it's working well? How is Charles feeling? Deflated is what I'm feeling. Like someone's let all the air out of his balloon. He's just lost his mother, for goodness sake. I mean, you know, whatever you think about the guy, he's lost his mother. Uh, if you saw the pictures of Charles at the funeral and walking behind the hearse, he was devastated absolutely devastated at the loss of his mother um charles you see wears all of his feelings it's interesting because he's painted as this very cold formal guy but actually you can see his and he might very well have been that i'm sure princess diana would say that that's what he was but i think as he's grown older it's all in his eyes i mean maybe you have to be intuitive to see it but i can see it very clearly it's all in his eyes great depths of sadness and distress and terror in terms of the role he's about to inherit in May, even though he's been preparing his whole life for it. But, you know, but here's a guy, no parent is perfect. I'm not making excuses for him, but it's the truth. I'm a parent. No parent is perfect. Every single parent makes mistakes. And it's only when you become a parent yourself and you get a bit older that you understand that. And you start to see your parents just as human beings 
<coughs> flawed human beings like you and me um, who don't have all the answers, who don't have, you know. But it takes a bit of wisdom and time to see that. Right, okay, I think these are properly shuffled now. shuffled now. Charles, let's have a look at Charles. How is Charles feeling after this documentary? And remember, this is only the first part that we've seen. How is Charles feeling? The Page of Swords, yeah, okay. Um, right, let's carry on. Before I carry on, actually, um, Knight of Cups just came out. He loves Harry. Harry's his son. He loves Harry. Knight of Cups. I love him. But look at this card. It's really interesting. Here's Harry with his sword. He's wielding, wrecking ball. The family coming. This, this feels like a family unit that's coming to talk to him. <laughs> it's really quite interesting. I shouldn't laugh. It's not laughable, but that's what I'm feeling. It's like the family are have been watching, have been observing what's been going on and they're coming to talk. And it feels as though Harry is completely and utterly oblivious. Um, the other interpretation here of the Knight of Cups, because I was pulling on Charles, not Harry, it's interesting because Charles is a king. He hasn't been crowned yet, but he is already King Charles III. But he's come up here as a knight, a Knight of Cups. This situation with Harry is disempowering him, okay, as a man, as a father, as the emperor. He's not feeling in his power. It's as though Harry's taken the wind out of him, you know. He's winded him. He's bruised him. He's feeling very vulnerable. He's feeling very emotional. Look at all that water, all that water. I don't know whether Charles does ride horses. I, oh, yeah, he does. I've seen him on a horse. But... It's more that I link the Queen with horses, but I'm seeing Charles with the horse, you know, whether he's spending more time with horses. Um, it's almost the energy of like the animals understand me better than people do. In fact, that is very Charles, isn't it? Because, you know, if you don't know, Charles is the one who talks to who plants. You know, he was mocked for that decades ago for talking to plants Oh, what an idiot he talks to plants. Well, yeah, roll forward a few decades and you realise actually he's quite, he was quite enlightened in that respect. I suspect he's got a very strong affinity with animals as well, maybe more so than humans, but okay. How is Charles feeling towards Harry? Hold on a minute, I just need to think what I want to say about these cards. Okay, Charles, I'm feeling, is a good father. He's seeing a couple in love, Harry and Meghan, okay? He was the one that walked Meghan down the aisle because her father wasn't there. He walked her down the aisle. <coughs> he took on a fatherly role there. He took on the role of the father without going into why Thomas Markle wasn't there. I don't think he was invited, was he? But I don't think they invited him. But he sees the happy, he sees the couple in love. But we've got this card again. All the fighting. <coughs> All the fighting. Lack of teamwork. Um, and we've got the Three of Cups, the reunion. I'm reading this before the second instalment goes out. I think the second instalment is going to be more damning towards Charles. Um, because right now it feels as though Charles still isn't clearly seeing what to do. He's hoping it will just resolve itself. Um, that there's going to be a happy ending somehow. <laughs> They're all going to come and hopefully they will. But I feel as though there might be something in the next episodes. Put it this way. If he attacks Camilla, that will be the red line as far as Charles is concerned. If they attack his wife, it's going to be game over. Um, right now we're in this sort of in-between energy where, oh, okay, I'm also hearing this could be him and Camilla. So Charles getting um, solace from his wife because he's sick of all the fighting and he just wants peace. He just wants a happy reunion. 
He doesn't want this. He wants them at the coronation. He wants them at the coronation. But how much more are they going to say? How much more mud are they going to throw? Let me just carry on a little bit more. Charles towards Harry and Meghan. Just feeling this great sadness. Queen of Pentacles. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, look at this. Queen of Pentacles, Emperor, that's Charles, he is now Emperor Angie, Queen, Camilla, Temperance, he's hoping it's going to blow over, he's hoping that healing waters can come in, he feels that he needs to be patient with his son, um, he feels that time will heal it. There's nothing coming through here about any rash decision from Charles as of this week. Let's just see, though, going forward. I might need to change my battery in a minute. In a, uh, going forward, likely actions by Charles towards Harry and Meghan. The Knight of Swords. The Ten of Cups, the Hierophant, the High Priestess. Yeah. Um, first thing is Charles will protect the institution of the monarchy. There's something we can't see. I feel as though Charles has a secret about them. I think he knows something about Meghan and Harry like he's got a, something up his sleeve as we say here in the UK he's got an ace up his sleeve but when all else fails he will protect the institution what are his actions we've got the sword and the family if it comes to it he will protect the family the royal family and the institution and the sacredness and the holiness of it and the um, mystery of it, he will take a sword to his son. Not literally, of course. He will cut him loose, is what I mean by that. He'll cut him loose to save the wider institution, is my feeling. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. But if he has to, he will. Um, I'm going to pull a card from a different deck now. Um, we're back. Fresh battery. Okay. Um, just wondering where to go next with this. So we've done how is Charles feeling? What actions will he take, if any? I think he will take, he will take action if need be. Um, let's stick with this same deck, actually. I'll pull the cards from something else at the end. I'd like to see how William is doing, how William's feeling. How is William feeling? I'm glad that Princess Diana isn't alive to see all this, you know. I think it would have broken her heart to see her sons so divided. I think she would have felt very, very torn. Because the thing you have to remember about Diana is that she was a monarchist. She believed in the royal family. She wasn't about disbanding the royal family uh, at all. Um, she wanted her son to be king. That's the most important thing you need to understand about Princess Diana. So anything that hurts that would have hurt her. And to see her own son do it, undermine it, I think it would have broken her heart. But she would have loved her son, Harry, and his wife, she'd have been caught in the middle of it all. Right. I just feel these two cards are dying. Now, hold on before I go on. We've got the sun and the eight of uh, swords. Because this is almost like Diana's radiance, Diana's light, would have tried to have freed them both. I'm talking here, William Harry, from the... Um, 
blockage which they have at the moment where they can't be side by side. She'd have helped take off the blindfold and, and to have freed them both so they could be the two little children again who used to play, the two brothers. Diana's on record as saying she always imagined William, uh, sorry, Harry as being William's wingman, okay, in terms of when he becomes king. And I've said in previous readings that I don't know how it all plays out, but I've always felt that Harry comes back into the fold when, Ch uh, when Harry becomes king, sorry, when William becomes king. Did I say that the right way around? When William becomes king, I feel Harry will be more close to him again. His father's death is the thing that's going to bring him to his senses. Shouldn't have to be that, but I feel that's what will happen. Okay, how is William feeling at this time? Let's just tune into William's energy. <sighs> I'm seeing like, you know, those greyhounds um, where um, greyhound racing and uh, the greyhounds get released from these trap doors and then they go and they, they're off. And it's like William, there's part of William that just wants to get out there and say what he wants to say in response to this documentary and probably say what he wants to say to his brother and sister-in-law. And it's like Kate in the background saying, no, no, she's like pulling him back. Um, yeah, yeah, look at that, Ace of Wands on the bottom of the uh, deck. You see, William and Harry are more <laughs> alike than people realise. William's also got this streak in him that can be very impulsive. But I think Catherine keeps him in check. That's what I'm feeling. Catherine keeps him in check. So he absolutely, he's got the red, look, again, the same card is coming out. He's, he, he I mean, it's a family at war. Let's be perfectly honest. The gloves are off now. So it's a family at war. There's definitely a part of William which is like, let me at him. You know, let me answer back. But he can't because he's the future king of England. You can't behave like that. You have to have some decorum <laughs> and you can mock our traditions and all of that. But that's how it is over here. So, no, William can't come out all guns blazing. And I just feel like Kate is like, oh, my God, you know, it's like trying to keep him in check. OK, William, what is there to say about how William is feeling? I'm just seeing William's eyes and they're just like focused on the future. He knows exactly what he is here to do. He's also focused on his father's coronation. This to me is the energy of the coronation, the um, the celebration, the celebration. Uh, so he's focused on the coronation next year. William, how does he feel? OK, those have just flown out. We've got the moon again, which doesn't surprise me because uh, the moon is William. William's a Cancerian. And we've got the ten of um, pentacles again, money. So, um, yeah, the page of swords. He thinks this is all about money. He thinks this is all about money. We've also got the empress. OK, Um because this is my Harry card in this reading. There's Harry with the family coming, you know, to speak to him. William, this is William, the moon. Um, he just sees it as a money grab. It's all about money as far as he's concerned. That's why Harry's doing it. The Empress is here. Why have we got the Empress? I feel that's Kate in this reading. I'm not quite sure why she's here at this point in this juncture. I don't know if they're trying to have another baby or something, because the Empress is usually, you know, pregnant, isn't she? Or maybe it's just symbolic in terms of William has his eye fo focused on the future, which is the birth and the fertility of the new, which is the royal family's not going anywhere. And you might hate that. You might want them gone. But they're not going anywhere, I don't believe, in my lifetime. I really don't. Uh, might be dif different in 200 years' time, 100 years' time, but I think they'll still be around when I'm about to pop my clogs. Right, uh, anything else to say about William? Let's go to another deck. Let's pull a card from here. William, how is William feeling? Ooh. Yeah, exactly. I, I said, didn't I, about vision. I've got my eyes on you. It's literally like I've got my eyes on you. He's got his eyes on them. He's watching every single move that they're doing. He's very wily, is William. 
but it's like he can see further, is what I wanted to say. He sees past this current drama and chaos. He's able to keep his eye fixed on the future. Vision. He has the vision. Um, number eight. Again, that energy of eight. Um, I'll match you is what I'm hearing. Okay. It's like, I'll match you. Okay. You release that on the eighth. You've got all that eight energy or Henry the eighth. I am and all that. I'll match you. I'll match you, brother. But I don't want to fight you. This is the energy I've got. I'll match you, but I don't want to fight you. But I will win. Uh, we have complicated. Oops. Hold on. Complicated. Number 11. <laughs> it is complicated. <laughs> and we have the energy of Grove. Number 21. That makes me think of Princess Diana's grave, which is on a beautiful island um, in a stately home and it's very secluded. And I don't know, it just makes me feel like there because it's a very private place. So William goes to a private place to connect with his mother um, for peace, for quiet, for tranquility. He knows this is a really complicated situation. What other card have we got to go with complicated? I'm actually feeling, even though William is probably angry, I feel as though he can see things from different people's perspectives. We have the energy of choices and risk. I wasn't really concentrating when I pulled those cards. I'll keep them because they've come out, but I don't know whether they were... I wasn't very focused when I was shuffling. Let me just try again. Um, okay, what am I trying to ask these cards? Explanation for complicated. The warrior. <laughs> I'm feeling as though this is saying William is complicated. William is a complicated... He's a more complex soul, I'm wanting to say. Um, Harry, it's all out there in the open. It's literally like I'll show you everything, you know? It's like, here's my diary. Here's my most personal feelings. William, a warrior in a different way, a bit more complicated, a bit more complex, deeper, basically, deeper, um, and keeps things more hidden. This card of risk and choice feels as though it's William saying to his brother, you took the risk. You made the choice to leave the nest and take a leap of faith. Go do it. Leave us alone. You know, that's your life. Do that. Uh, I'm just feeling here William is just totally focused on the prize, which is the, uh, the crown. This is rightful thing. Right, let's pull a few cards for Kate. And I think I'd like another deck. For Kate, let's go for our Christmas deck. Bit of light relief, please. The Winter Weight Tarot deck. Let's see how Kate is feeling. Let's just tune into Kate. Okay. Kate. Ooh, 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 sorry, they're all falling out before you can even do anything. I was just trying to tune in and straight away, King of Cups and the Eight of Pentacles. I can't quite make out with her whether this is, I feel it's, because you'd think King of Cups is William, okay? Because obviously she loves him. He's her king. She's his queen. But I'm also feeling this is Charles. I feel that Kate is very close to Prince, um, I can't want to say Prince Charles, King Charles III as he is now. Kate is very concerned for the king, King Charles. I think Charles is a Scorpio, isn't he? So it's that watery energy. And it's like all of that hard work that Charles has put in. It's like her, her, her feelings are with Charles is what I'm wanting to say. As well as a husband, I'm sure. But let's just see what else. Kate. Middleton. How is she feeling about this documentary? I feel as though she's somebody who just lets things go over uh, water off a duck's back. You know that expression, water off a duck's back? Yeah, because look, we've got the tower on the bottom of the deck. But I'm just feeling water off a duck's back. It'll all pass over. It, you know, come on, we, we just, just get on with it. That's what it is. It's very Catherine of Aragon. I mean, during Catherine of Aragon's time, you know, she had the tower that fell. Was she put in the tower? I don't think she was actually, but she was certainly secluded away somewhere else. But I just feel this energy with uh, Catherine, which is just um, uh, walked off a duck's back. It'll all, you know, there's an expression, isn't there, that I use, yesterday's fish and chip paper. You know, it's that type of energy. So we've got the tower on the bottom of the deck. 
which is literally like, yeah, we've got all of these wrecking balls coming at the tower, coming at the institution of which I am part of. I'm the future Queen of England, okay, Catherine. I'm the future Queen of England. But, the, you know, I don't know, I'm just getting this feeling of, but it's all all right, it's all okay. She's Capricorn, isn't she, Kate? She's very grounded, very, very grounded. All right, what else? How she so that's how she's feeling about the documentary that they're firing all of these shots at us, at me. But I'm not feeling as though she takes it quite as personally somehow. I think William takes it more personally. But let's just see. Let's see what the cards say. How is Catherine feeling about this documentary? Page of Wands, Ten of Wands. A bit tired of the whole thing, really. Tired of. This would be Harry, Page of Wands. Tired of it all. Three of Wands, just wanting to um, look out onto a broader horizon, look out onto a more peaceful horizon. Three of um, Pentacles. Can't we all just get on again? Can't we all just make it work? They were a threesome. I mean, not sexually, but, you know, William, Harry and Kate, before Meghan came on the scene, where we're always together, they were always laughing, they, you know, they just look so happy together. Uh, Harry very much felt more like her sister. You know, it's like a brother-sister type relationship. Very, very happy threesome, as it were. And it's just like there's a, a longing for that again. Let's just see how does she feel. I'm going to ask individually. How does she feel about Harry now? Catherine, how does she truly feel about Harry at this time? Catherine, how does she feel about Harry at this time? The Ten of Cups, is that? Ten of Cups and the King of Wands. There's certainly no malice in her heart. I don't think there's any malice in Kate's heart. Um, she still sees him as part of the family. She still sees him as part of the family. Um... It's an interesting thing to say that she sees him as equal stature to his, his brother. Obviously, William is the one who's going to be the king. But here she's seeing Harry as king like as well. But I think that's a past life connection between the two of them because he was her king. He was he was her king. Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon. He was he, they were married. But I'm feeling as though she just still feels him as family. There's no malice here from Kate. Let's see how she feels towards Harry. Oh, sorry, I've answered that. How does she feel towards Meghan? How does Kate feel towards Meghan? The Six of Pentacles and the Knight of Pentacles. She feels as though a softly, softly, cautious, cautious approach is needed with Meghan. Queen of Swords is showing there. So she, it's interesting with Kate. She's very... Um, she doesn't see herself above them at all. She sees them as her equals. Um, she does see that Megan carries the sword and can do damage with that sword. But um, she, the Knight of Pentacles is a very slow and steady energy. Um, and the Six of Pentacles is giving and receiving. Um, I think she's the one that will say to William, pick up the phone and talk to them, will you? You know, try and make it better. Try and give something back. Um, but equally, it's an energy of balance. She's also hoping that they they get they receive something from Harry and Meghan as well. Um, it's a very lovely energy, Kate. So I really like her energy. Really like her energy. Let's just see anything else wants to come out this other deck. She's the one that can help sort this out. I feel. Uh, I feel as though she's she's like the grown up in the room. I'm wanting to say, she's like the grown up in the room. The High Priestess of Air. Look at that. The whilst there is chaos going on, okay, here she is as the High Priestess of Air, in control of her mind, in control of her thoughts, composed, loyal, loyal. That's her. We're very lucky to have her, I think. Very lucky to have her as a country. Um... Lovely, lovely energy. 
Um, okay. Now, any other questions? Uh, I was going to ask, how are the British public feeling? Okay. It's a bit hard to say how the Commonwealth feeling because there's so many different countries, but I can pin it down a little bit to how are the British public feeling. Um, those cards just flew out of the deck. Interesting. Interesting. The question was going to be, you didn't quite get it out, but how are the British public feeling after this documentary? We've got this card coming up again that somebody wants to win at all costs. There's a lot of headaches. There's a lot of stress. I mean, I don't think people are up at night losing sleep over this, guys. <laughs> but it's just an illustration of um, some a degree of anguish, concern, anger, um, turbulence. Uh, it's emotion, but it's a more negative energy, you know. Uh, it's troubling, like a troubling energy, because this guy here, Harry, wants to win at all costs. And we loved him. We loved him. I think Harry was the second most popular royal after the Queen a few years ago. We loved Harry. I'm saying we. I'm talking about the collective here, not myself. We. But we've got the hanged man. Now we're not so sure anymore. Um... Hmm. Bit of a story with these cards. Um, right, let me go back. So some troublesome, troublesome energy. We don't like being attacked as a country. OK, we're not all closet racists over here. So we don't like that. We don't like the fact that this guy is trying to win at all costs. We loved him. We're now having a change of um, a change of thought about him, maybe. Uh, are we having a change of thought about the royal family? Maybe. We have a choice. The card of the lovers. We want the truth. We want the truth. We want clarity. I also feel this is the British public saying we want a firm decision from the king to take action on these two. There's a big movement to strip them of their titles coming up from the from the ground, groundswell opinion, as it were. Cut them off is what people are saying here in this country. Cut them off. Take away their titles. Um, see how they see how they do because look it's the king of pentacles with the ace of swords this is what the British public are saying and we've got the two boys William and Harry one of them the public feels as though they still love the other one's got this nasty big sword and is doing a lot of damage with it the British public feel. I realise this is a general reading, guys. Of course there's going to be people in Britain who absolutely love Harry, absolutely love Meghan, don't like Charles, all the rest of it. I'm just doing a general collective reading here, okay? So please don't get triggered. I'm doing my best. Um, what am I asking here? What are we asking? Let me just ask a question. There's no point just shuffling and having a card otherwise. Um, anything else to say about how the British public are feeling? At this time, how are the British public feeling with regards to this documentary being released? Fulfillment. <sighs> Strange card to get. The card of fulfillment. Wine, pomegranate. What does that mean? Oh, I'm understanding. We've had our fill of it. We're sick of it. <laughs> is what I'm feeling. We're sick of it. We've had our fill of it. We don't want to hear about it anymore. You know, let's watch England tomorrow. Play France. Hopefully we're going to win the World Cup. Let's not even go there. I've got opinions on the World Cup. I don't think it should be being played where it's being played. But anyway, I hope England do well uh, despite that, really. But um, there's part of me that's trying to boycott it, but also part of me that supports the English team. Uh, that's what I'm feeling. It's like we've had our fill of it. We're, we're, we're complete, thank you. OK, <laughs> we, we don't need any more documentaries, Harry, or any more books. Because, of course, he has got another book. He's got a book coming out in the new year. This is not the end of it. Right, how do I end this reading? How do I end this reading? Um, 
I'm going to go to another deck. I'm just going to see any other messages that want to come up from Spirit. <sighs> Who signed a contract on the dotted line? And who's going to be feeling the loss? That's the contract with Netflix. It's signing away your life, your privacy. You can't on one hand have film of being chased by the paparazzi. I think there's footage in the first episode of, you know, all the cameras clicking on them and how intrusive it is. It's actually a piece of footage that's taken from somebody else, Katie Price, a celebrity in the UK, when she attended court. So it's not it wasn't it's not even factual footage that's in the documentary. Um, so you can't on one hand say that, you know, we want our privacy and our engagement. I believe they said our engagement was just a big reality show that was orchestrated and we had no control over. They're in a reality show. They've they've signed on the dotted line to be in a big reality show. Netflix. It's going to be a loss that comes as a result of this. It's not going to create happiness at all. Um, anything else to say, please? Anything else to say before I close this video out? Megan's optimistic, though. She's optimistic. She'll always be optimistic. That looks very much like her. Very, she'll always be optimistic. There's always going to be a new day for her. There's always going to be a new opportunity, a new relationship, a new initiative, a new uh, role. You know, she's an actress at the end of the day. Um, that's what I'm feeling that's saying. Even if she gets very unhappy, very down, she'll, she'll, she'll bounce back type energy because she feels as though she deserves it. She feels as though she deserves it. I deserve to be in that garden smelling the roses, having the best life. But this card on the bottom of the deck is concerning, which is the energy of dark thoughts, dark thoughts. And it's a man who's in a maze. He's about, he's in the maze. The lightning is overhead. And, uh, Yeah, you see, dark thoughts and decrease. One does rather well out of this, which I feel is Megan. One's got more to lose. Oh, it's not her. It's him. Harry's got more to lose. He just doesn't realise it yet. But he will. He will discover what's truly important. And I'm feeling as I'm hearing he's mining for gold in the wrong place. We've got the card of travel. I'm going to stick by my earlier predictions of a few years ago, which is that at some point he comes back. What the reception is going to be when that happens, I don't know. And I don't know what time frame we're talking. But uh, what's that expression? There's no real winners in war. Let's just have a little final look at Charles, King Charles. Anything else to say with regards to King Charles? Let's pull a card from this one deck, actually. Charles. He's the future king. Charles. Yeah. Nothing's going to stop Charles's ascension to the throne however short it is, um, it's preordained, uh, it'll happen, whatever the wrecking ball tries to do, it'll happen. Will the monarchy change and transform? Yes, but it was already going to be doing that. 
under Charles's new leadership and eventually William. The monarchy going forward. The monarchy going forward. Oh, nice cards. The monarchy going forward. Joyous fun and family. The royal family will be fine. And look at it's the children. It's the younger generation of the children. Um, that's George and I can't remember what they're all called now, but there's a lot of grandchildren. It's a lighter energy coming into the royal family. Maybe all of this drama and circus has to play out first. But um, that's how I'm reading it, guys. OK, I'm going to leave it there. Take care of yourselves. Have fun. I'll be back soon. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed that. Much love. Take care. Thank you for your support. Bye for now.